Uh, in this video, I have a domestic reverse osmosis filtering unit. It is called a six-stage unit. And the reason why it's called a six-stage unit is as follows. The console water comes in over there, and then it goes to this first filter. This is commonly a five micron polypropylene filter, which is a sediment filter used to remove rust, mud, dirt, and any other floating debris that might be in the water. Then on the output of the first stage, it comes into the second stage. This is often your granular carbon filter. This is meant to remove chlorine or organic molecules and also assist with improving the taste. Then from the output of the carbon filter, it goes into the third stage, which is commonly the carbon filter. This carbon block filter is an additional step just to assist in removing any organic matter that got through the second stage. So these are the first three stages. Now from the output of the third stage, it goes to the fourth stage. The fourth stage is where we insert the reverse osmosis membrane. Now over here, I have the unit. Now from the output of the reverse osmosis membrane, we go to the fifth stage. Over here, we've got a taste and odor filter. And if this is your final stage, you will then go directly to your tap. Now, in this example, I'll be adding an additional stage, making it a six-stage filter. So from the output of stage five, which was the chlorine taste and odor reducer, I will then go to the input of this mineralizer. And then from the output of this mineralizer, I will then go to my faucet. And the output is on this side. And how I know that is because it says flow with an arrow going in this direction. So that is the input and that is the output. Right, so in totality, there are six stages. Now you might notice that this particular unit has a pump and a tank. Because of low water pressure, one can use a pump to pressurize the water. Now the pump will require a connection to the electricity because it has this AC-DC adapter, which needs to be plugged into mains. Now here is the pump and the pump will pressurize the water. So here at the back of stage five, I've got a T piece. So that means that from the reverse osmosis membrane, I'm coming into this stage five, but I'm also teeing off to my tank. So that is why I have this pipe and on the side here I have my tank. Now on the top of the tank, I'll also insert this little stop valve. I will use some PTFE tape, but I'm just showing you the layout and this will connect to the unit. Notice that the tank is connected with just one pipe. And then lastly, just on the side here, there is an outflow pipe which needs to go to your drain. So I will just be inserting the pipe like that. And then the other end of that pipe can go over here on this pipe, or it can go over there at the back on the drain pipe. And that means I will need to make a little hole here so that the unused water can flow into the drain. Right, so the next step would be to take your measurements and make sure that it will fit under your counter and that you've got enough space. And right now, I'm going to assemble the whole thing on the table. Once it is completely assembled over here, I will then install it under the counter and then connect the tap. All right, so I'm gonna start with the filters over here. Right, so there's a sediment filter. Now on this filter, there's actually an arrow and the arrow is showing the water flow and it says upwards. Also, there is a seal on the top here. Now inspecting the unit over here, you can see that the water flows out from the filter over here and goes to stage three. Now, if we follow that tube, we can see that the out is coming from here. So the cleaner water is coming through here and going through that pipe. So that means that this filter needs to be installed like this with the arrow going up because there it is going to the outlet. It'll also be water tight at the top so that the water coming in cannot get into the water going out. And that is why the seal is on the one side. While here at the bottom, notice that there are holes and those holes are specifically there to let the water go in. And that is how I know that this filter must sit like this because the water coming in from stage one one, remember this is stage two, is here in the whole container. The whole container fills up with that water, which then goes through the bottom over here in this opening, gets filtered and comes out through the top and goes through there. Which means in this installation, the arrow is going up and there is my seal at the top. For the carbon block unit, I can just make sure that both seals are in good order and I can just make sure that they are clean. Sometimes some carbon is sitting here, some plastic, and I can now insert all the filters into the housings. Now you can insert these housings directly into here, but I put a little bit of pure petroleum jelly just around the seal. There is no perfume in this petroleum jelly, and I just put a tiny bit. Right, so I've put a little bit of lubrication on these seals, and if you do use a lubricant, make sure it does not have any additives that will damage this rubber seal. And now I just turn each one, one by one. I make sure not to cross thread it, if I feel like it's not going in, then I start again. Notice that I'm just using my hand to tighten these. It should not offer any resistance at this stage. Right, now I go around and I try and make them hand tight. I am taking a fairly 
tight grip and I'm tightening. Right, now that they've seated nicely, I can just take this little spanner and all I do is a slight tighten. I'm just tightening it like 1 16th of a turn and that is it. Remember that if you make these too tight, it becomes very difficult to loosen them in six months or a year when you need to replace these filters. All right, so I'm on the side now. I just remove this pipe and I unscrew that. I take my RO membrane and notice there are two seals at the bottom here. That must be inserted all the way in. I insert this in, notice there's another seal over here and now I depress it. Now it's time to insert this top. If you notice that the top is not fastening nicely, just open it again and make sure you've seated this all the way in. In this case, it wasn't seated all the way in, it is now all the way in, notice that it is flush. I can now tighten this lid. I grab the tube here and I tighten the lid by hand. Now there's a tube that needs to be inserted all the way in here, so I insert it and I can even see the color change in the fitting over here and now I can just tighten this. All these are tightened by hand. Now as stated, I'm adding an additional stage, so I'm going to have an additional filter attached to stage five, so this will make it stage six. So I just need to open this filter and clamp it onto here and pipe it accordingly. Now there is the filter on the sides. It's got these end caps. I just need to remove these end caps. So I'm just removing these end caps. Now in order to insert this here, the unit does come with these C clamps. So I just need to clamp it on like that. There's one and there's the second one. Now I can clamp it onto the other filter which is sitting here. Now in your kit, they should have supplied you with some extra piping. I need to pipe from here round to the back to the input of this mineral filter. If you are not using this final stage, you can go right from here to your faucet. But because I'm using this additional stage, I'm just going to determine how much pipe I need to get to the back here. I'm just cutting the pipe. Right, so this is what the bend will look like. And notice that I haven't got a very harsh bend. If I cut this too short, then the angle will be very acute and it might cut off the flow over time. Right, now I need to insert this elbow, but I first need to put PTFE tape here. It might be easier to work with this filter in hand. Here are two different thicknesses of PTFE tape. I'm going to use the thinner one. Right, now because this goes in clockwise, See there, it's tightening in clockwise. I need to be aware of that because that dictates how I wrap the PTFE tape. So if I wrap it like this, so I'm wrapping it like that. Now watch what happens. When I put this in here, it's like the tape wants to go in the opposite direction. It's almost like unraveling and that is incorrect. All right, so I need to wrap this about eight times. All right, I've gone around eight times and just note there's no PTFE tape covering the hole and there's no loose hairs anywhere around here. Now I can tighten it into the filter. The first few turns should be quite easy. I'm being careful not to cross thread it. Right, so as I'm tightening it, you might see that I'm going in the direction which almost tightens the tape. That's how I know the tape was in the right direction. All right, so I tighten this almost to the end or where it gets quite tight. So it's already getting quite tight. I am quite close to the end. I don't need to go right to the end. I just need to stop when it gets quite tight and quite close to the end. Right, follow the same procedure for the other side and insert the elbow. If for some reason your elbow does not get tight, maybe you didn't put enough of the PTFE tape, it's not a problem. Just unscrew it and start again. Once I unscrew it, I just make sure there's no tape inside there. And now I need to get the old tape off the threads. Find some of the threads and start to unravel it. Try to get all the old PTFE tape off. Right, when redoing it, make sure that it is completely clean of the old PTFE tape. Right, now I can insert the pipe into this elbow. I make sure it goes all the way in. Right, I just tighten this nut, making sure not to cross thread it. Right, now on this side, I'm not going to do anything yet because this is going to the faucet. So I will leave this open so that when I install it, I don't have a pipe in the way. The pipe that's going to the drain is very easy to connect, so I'm not going to connect it now. When I insert the pipe in there, it's like it's self-locking. So even if this is in a difficult to reach place, inserting the pipe there later is not a problem. So I'm just leaving that as is for now. Now the tank needs to be connected to this T-piece over here. But I'm not going to do it yet because this has to be mounted and I don't want to have a pipe hanging off. But I am going to quickly demonstrate what to do here with this part of the tank. 
Now we connect the tank via the pipe via the stop valve over here. So I'm going to put the PTFE tape over here and then I'm going to insert this stop valve. Since this tightens clockwise, I'm going to put the tape on also in a clockwise direction. I'm going to go around eight times. Notice that there's no tape or hairs blocking the opening. Now I can take the stop valve and turn it. Be very careful not to cross thread it. Just confirm that it is seating in a vertical position. If I arrive at an angle, I'm going to cross thread it. The first few turns should be very easy. If you're finding that it's already tight at this point, you might be cross threading it. Right, so in this case it is fine and I can tighten it. I do not need to tighten it all the way to the end. I just need to get it until it starts offering quite a bit of resistance. There's quite a bit of resistance over there and it is close to the end, but not quite at the end. I'm going to stop at this point. Now, if your system was not pre-assembled, then it does have these clips and all you need to do is clip in these cartridges and they can shift up and down. Right, there is the assembled unit and there is the tank. So I'm going to now install this under the counter. At the back of the unit, there are many places to mount this. In this case, I'm going to insert two screws into my cupboard and I'm going to hang this unit. Make sure that whatever you use to hang the unit will be able to handle the full weight of the unit plus the water inside the filters. I'm just going to pull this off here so I can get space to this mounting point over here. Right, if you're going to mount this into wood, you can just use wood screws, but you will need to use a washer, especially if you're going to hang it. So there I can use a screw with a washer. I can do the same on this side. And then once it's in its correct place, I can also use these additional holes over here to screw in some more screws. Now, if you're going to be mounting this unit on a brick wall, then you will need to use expansion bolts. So here are two different types. So I would just need to drill a hole and then this would uh, fasten through there and then I screw it in and this expands, locking it into the wall. You can also use this type. Some people prefer this. So you mount this into the wall and what will be left there are these threads. Then all you need to do is hang the unit on the threads and thereafter there is the washer and the nut. Now the unit is not very heavy so you can see that this expansion bolt is only a 50 millimeters, 5 centimeters. And if you're going to be mounting this on wood, consider using the additional holes. And the reason for that is once it's mounted, over time you'll need to change the filters. And it is quite a vigorous activity pulling these off and then unscrewing these, putting these back on. And that's why I recommend using as many of these holes as possible so that this is mounted very firmly against your back wall or your wooden surface. Now, does the unit have to be mounted on a wall? No, it can just be freestanding. But in my case, I am going to be mounting this in a cabinet. So all I need to do is measure the width here and mark off the holes. Now, I just need to work out the distance between these two hanging points and it is 25 centimeters on the nose. But I also need to work out the distance over here. And because I'm going to hang it, it means it's going to go up and then sit on the screw. So that means there must be enough clearance. Otherwise, I won't be able to lift it off or hang it back on. Right, mine's going to be installed under the counter. I have this piece of wood here which I'm going to use to hang the unit on. Right, I'll just check the level. I find it's easier if you just hang one side and then you can screw in the other side with the washer. Right, so one side is hung and now all I need to do is lift the other side and screw it in. Right, to get clearance, you've got an extension on my battery operated driver. Right, there's the screws on the top. Right, the unit is now mounted under the counter. It's now time to install the inlet where the water is going to come in from council. There at the back, I'll also have to install the drain water. And then over here, this will go to the tap for the clean water. So that means I'm going to have three pipes running from this unit. And I'm going to drill a hole in here because my taps are on the other side. All right, so this is what my cabinet looks like. It's under counter. So you can see that the water supply is on the right and the basin is also on the right. So I'm going to have my pipes going from the left to the right. So I need to have a little hole through here so that my pipes can all run through here to the other side. Now I'm just doing a quick check on the other side to make sure that I'm not drilling into any pipes. When drilling the hole, just be mindful of any harsh bends that you might need to take. So I've specifically drilled it here because I have a straight line to this attachment. The others have enough free play to all come through this hole. Right, there's my hole for one pipe, but I need space for three pipes. So I'm gonna drill the hole a bit bigger. 
Right, so there's the unit under the counter. There are the three pipes. Just a tip, what I do is I take the long side and I leave it on this side and then I feed the loose ends on that side. The reason being is that side is fixed. What I mean by that is I can now pipe those to the unit and I know the exact length. So that means I can now connect these three pipes to the water filter. All right, so the first pipe is already connected over here. I've already pushed it in there. Remember to push the pipes in as far as they can go and then tighten. So this one's going to be the inlet coming from the console supply. Then I've got this one over here, which is the outlet. So this is gonna to go to the faucet. And then the third one is for the drain. There at the back, I've pushed it in there and it is now tight. Right here, the three pipes. Now, there are my two water supplies. One is hot, one is cold. Now, since this is red, this is probably the hot, but I can't trust that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch on the tap and then wait to see which one of these gets warm. Right, so here's the tap. I'm just switching it on and then I'm gonna let it run and wait to see which of those pipes gets warm because I'm putting it on the hot now. Right, so this is indeed the hot water and it has been piped correctly. So because this is a cold water system, I'm going to be using this side. Now I have these stop valves over here so I can turn them both off. Right, I've turned these sideways to turn them off. Right, I'm at the tap and I'm just checking. There's no hot water flow and there's no cold water flow. So I've disconnected the water. Right, now at this point, there's two options. You can either use a standalone cold tap, which means I'm going to have to tee off the cold water supply and connect it to this tap. And this will be the tap for my purified water standing alone. That means that this will have to be mounted separately from that tap that's already there. So that means that this mixer tap remains here, still has the hot and cold pipe to it, but then one can tee off and add an additional tap here just for the drinking water. The other option is to remove this tap completely and install this three-way tap. So this tap has the hot and cold, but then at the back, it's got a second tap for the drinking water. Right, for this tap, I just removed the covering on this steel washer. Some people prefer to have the tap standing like that, while others prefer it just like that. If you are using this wider disc washer, then you can put the washer there and then this larger washer over there. Or if you're not gonna use this disc, then I can just insert this washer inside here. It just fits. Then I use this plastic washer, which will go under the counter. This gets inserted through the counter. And then I put this plastic retaining washer on the other side, which is tightened using this nut. So the tap sits on the counter like this. This is directly on the counter. There's the counter. And this plastic washer is underneath being held in place by that nut. Now, if you don't have a counter to mount the tap on and you want to mount it on a wall, the tap should have come with this L bracket. So all I need to do is mount the L bracket on a wall first. For example, if I don't have a counter and I want to mount the tap on a wall, I can do it like this. The first thing I need to do is drill these three holes and mount this bracket on the wall. Once this is mounted, then I can fit the tap. I put the washer inside there. I seat the tap in like that. Then I put the plastic retaining washer and then I tighten it using this nut. So if you're gonna be mounting it on the wall, this is what it'll look like. If this is in a workshop or something like that, then you still have your clean drinking water. Then to pipe your tap, this pipe will come from your water purifier. I first put this nut on like that. I then put this plastic ring over the pipe. I then push this little plastic pipe deep inside there. I press this into the tap as far as it can go, and then I tighten this. So if you are gonna be using the standalone tap for drinking water, then under the counter, you should have something that looks like this. You'll just remove the cold water pipe. I'll show you in a second. Then you'll have to insert this piece, which is a T piece. Notice that I can tee off the side. I will need to put some PTFE tape there, or you can use hemp. Then you just rejoin the pipe to your cold tap. So this would go back on, and that goes to your cold tap as it was. Now, if you had installed the single drinking water tap, the purified water will feed into the pipe, which extends through the counter, which is this one over here. And from your cold water supply, there you can see I've teed off. This goes to the water filter. The other side would go to your regular tap that was already there. Right, now this option here gives me the hot and cold on this side, unfiltered. And on this side, this is the drinking water. Now, don't worry about the fact that I've got this screw here. It's just because this lever broke off. So I've just put a screw in here for the meantime. Right, so that means I'm gonna have three inputs here. And that is why there are three water hose holes there. The other hole is for this, which is going to mount it on the counter. So for the remainder of the video, I'm going to be following this option. So I have these three pipes and they are going to be inserted into here. 
Now, since I'm going to be replacing the tap that's already there with this one, I can now remove the old tap. Now, the old tap and the new tap use the same system. So underneath the counter, I'll see something that looks like this. So what I have to do is I have to unscrew this nut and then loosen this. Or in some cases, there's actually a screwdriver option here where I can put a screwdriver in there and loosen this. And this will come out of the body and then the tap will come off. So I'm now going to remove the old tap. So there, using a screwdriver, I've unscrewed that and now I can loosen this and the tap will come out of the counter. There it's come loose. Now, so because I'm changing the tap, it means I've had to loosen the hose for the hot water. So I have the cold and hot water now free and I can pull this up. So I just need to loosen this one hose. Right, now I can remove the tap. Right, so with this tap, I'm going to have three pipes coming in. One is going to be hot, cold, and the other one's going to be the purified water. This is the connection for the purified water, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Notice these pipes have no markings, so I'll have to just determine which of these is cold, hot, and purified water by doing a little blow test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the first pipe here, and I don't have to make it very tight. And all I do is I just blow in there. So everything is off at the moment. So when I blow in here, it should be blocked, which it is. It's blocked. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to open the drinking water side. And I'm going to blow in here and see if it flows. So that means that this is for the drinking water. So I'm going to now label it. All right. So I just use the tape and I put it on the pipe. I'm going to leave the pipe there. It's not tight. So just so I know which pipe is going where. Right. I'm going to try another one. I'm now going to close this and I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to blow in here. So in this case, it's only when this lever is set to the hot side. So this is the hot pipe. So by process of elimination, I know the third is the cold one. If your pipes are color coded, then you can just use the color coding to indicate which is the cold and the hot. There isn't going to be enough space to put the cold tap in now. So what I'm going to do is I'll insert this from underneath. What I'm going to do now is get this ready for mounting. Now there's the hole. I just want to see that both of these pipes can fit in here. And yes, they can. So now I can finally tighten these. Now just a little tip before tightening this, just wet this with a bit of water. Right, now I can insert it and tighten it. Right, so I've tightened two, and now I just need to determine which way this is going to be sitting. Right, before inserting the pipes, just make sure you put the seal over the pipes. So I just need to do a test to make sure that the levers are not being blocked by this counter. So that might even mean flipping this completely round. But in this case, I can see that I'm being blocked by this counter. Right, so for hot cold works perfectly and the drinking water, I pull it down and pull it up works perfectly. The reason why there's a screw here is just because this lever broke off. So I'm just using a screw in the meantime. Now, if you can't get this lever to be in the right place, you can take an Allen key and open the grub screw there, and then you can move this to a different position, allowing you more flexibility. So in this case, the drinking water option on the left-hand side here is perfect. Right, so it's now ready to be mounted. I clean the area with a rubbing alcohol. This rubbing alcohol is 90% alcohol. It's got no glycol. So it just removes any oily residue. Right, so from the underside, I'm now going to insert the last pipe. Then I'm going to mount it. This is going to be screwed into the body of the unit. Notice that the rubber washer is facing upwards. So that is going to mate on the underside of this counter. And then that is at the bottom. And then this locking nut over here will be tightened to fasten this whole thing pulling the tap down, holding it in place. All right, and when installing this, just make sure that it goes round so those pipes are on this side so that this doesn't wobble. Right, so there I'm inserting the last of the three pipes, just making it tight. Right, it's quite tight, but not completely tight. I'm still able to move this, and I just want to do a quick test to see that everything is in the right position, yes. Now, I never adjust this while it's tight, otherwise I'll destroy that rubber seal. So I'm happy with the position. It's not quite tight yet, and I'm now going to tighten it. Right, the new tap has been installed. I can move the levers. They are in the accessible position, and now I just need to do the plumbing. Right, this is the hot I'm going to leave for last so that I've got space to work here. This is the cold, and what I need to do is add an additional point here in order to tee off. Right, so I'm adding this piece over here. The cold is going to be connected over there, but the drinking water is going to tee off off on the side. Now these threads need some preparation. I can use the PTFE tape. Seeing as though there's hemp used before, I'm just going to use hemp over here. But as I said, you can use the PTFE tape. Right, so all I need to do is wrap this with hemp. Right, so I just dip the hemp in some water and then I just make it look like this. So I'm taking the water and I'm taking it between my hands and just twisting the hemp as I wet it. So it is now wet and thin. Now, because this is going to be tightened in a clockwise direction, I'm now going to put the hemp on in that same direction. Right, so I'm going to start here towards the beginning and just wrap it 
I'm going in the direction that I'm going to be threading the adapter. Now, because this is quite long, just be careful of putting too much pressure on this. It might bend the pipe lower down. So I'm going to support this while I'm tightening it. Right, I'm just putting my valve in now, which is coming out at an angle. And I'm being mindful of this because if I tighten this while this T-piece is facing there, then it will be blocked by this pipe. I'm just seeing now where I will have the best access. So the pipe is going to feed from there to the water purifier, and that seems like it'll work very well. Now, this does not have to be very tight because the hemp is very good. What happens with the hemp is it swells up when it starts drying and it becomes watertight. Now, for this piece over here, it also needs hemp or PTFE tape. I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to use the PTFE tape, and then I'll do the hemp. Since this is going to be tightened in a clockwise direction, I'm going to put the PTFE tape in that same direction. Make sure that when you start the PTFE tape, you do not cover the opening there and there's no bunching. Now I can turn this, right, it can go around about seven or eight times. And then over here, I just break it. But when it does this, just make sure that you don't let it bunch and just pull it to the side. Notice nothing is covered there. It is even. And now I can go and insert this onto that other adapter. Now, since I've been using hemp, I'm just going to demonstrate what I do. I've got the hemp. This is a small fitting, so I just want the hemp to be very thin. And you can just twist and pull on the back, and then it kind of makes it thinner. So it is wet, and I'm just pulling it at the back, and it actually makes it thinner. You might even see the additional water in my hands. Right, so since this is going to be turned clockwise, I'm going to also put the hemp in a clockwise orientation. Notice that you can barely see the hemp on the threads. I don't need a lot. This is just a small fitting. So what I'm showing is that the hemp doesn't change the thickness here. It's going in between the threads. Here towards the middle and the back, yes, that's where I uh, have it a bit thicker. If I put too much hemp here, it'll put too much pressure on the threads and it can damage the other fitting. The other thing is if the hemp is too thick, then this will only thread in maybe up to thread number three before becoming tight. We do want to get it in quite deep and that is why towards the beginning, the isn't a lot of hemp. The nice thing about hemp is it doesn't have to be beautiful. It's not an artwork. As long as there's some hemp on the threads, it's fine. An additional thing is that if there is a slight leak coming through here, the hemp will swell up and it'll actually block that leak. So it offers a second line of defense. All right, so it's time to fit this. Just make sure the hemp is wet when you are fitting it. All right, so I can now connect the hot the cold, unfiltered, and then this pipe is going to the water filter for the inlet. All right, so I'm gonna start at the top so that I'm not in the way of things. This is the cold. All right, then I've got the hot, which is over here. Now, just be aware of the pipes at the back. We don't wanna have harsh loops. So I'm just checking the orientation because when I tighten this, I don't want this to turn and become all twisted. So I'm getting it in the way I want it. And now when I tighten it, I can just hold this while I tighten that. Now these have rubber washers, so I don't need to make it very tight and I don't need to put any PTFE tape or any hemp. Now this third pipe is for the drinking water. Here is the adapter. There is a rubber washer inside there, so I don't need PTFE tape. I just need to tighten this. Right, to tighten this plastic fitting, I use two shifting spanners. Note that this does not have to be very tight. The reason I'm using two shifting spanners is just to go a little bit tighter than hand tight. I can feel it's offering a bit of resistance. One sixteenth turn and I'm done. This will be where the purified water is coming in. Right, I have these three pipes, so now I can pipe the inlet, which is coming from the water supply going to the water filter and then the output from the water filter going to the clean water drinking tap. So I just need to determine which pipe is which by going to the other side to see which pipe is coming from where. All right, so this one at the back is the inlet and I can see on the other side which one is moving. So this is my inlet pipe, so it just needs to be connected to this point over here. All right, I'm just cutting it now, make sure that it is flat. All right, so I just put the nut on first. There's the nut. And now I just need to push this onto that nipple. I like to just wet it first, makes it easier to slide on and just support it because I don't want to snap the pipe that's holding this whole fitting. Make sure that it bulges like that and it's fitted right to the end. And now I can just tighten this. Right, this is the clean water, that's the drinking water. All right, this is the pipe for the uh, drinking water. And then I open that nut, push this all the way in. Let's go all the way in, and then I just tighten this. Lastly, we've got this pipe which goes to the drain. 
Now just a note about this drain pipe, make sure that you've pressed it in far enough there. Now one way to test that is if you blow into here, there should be no air escaping. So that's a quick test. Right, so this is the drain pipe. Right, so I have this pipe over here and then I've got the PVC one at the back. Now what has to happen is it has to be inserted in there or in here and they provide you with this fitting. So this fitting clamps around the unit, the pipe goes in there, but it does require me to drill a hole so that the pipe can feed into the drain. Now in my case the drain pipe at the back is too big for this fitting so I'm forced to use this rubber pipe here. So effectively I'm wrapping it like that and the pipe is going to go in there but I'll first have to drill a hole there. So what I'm doing now is I'm just seeing where's the best place to fit this pipe. So for me it's going to be perched at an angle like that. I don't want to have very harsh bends here and now all I need to do is drill a little hole. So I'm using a six millimeter drill bit and I'm just drilling into this pipe being very careful not to go all the way through to the other side and you can rotate it very slowly. Now it does come with this adhesive to stop any possible leaks in the future and I just open this up and put it over that hole. Right, so this is gonna clamp directly over that hole and this will not leak. Now I feed the drain pipe right through here. There it comes through and I see if I can get that inside there. Now I don't wanna push this thing all the way that it blocks the flow. I just want it to seat in there just a little bit. So I'm just observing it and yes, it's getting in there nicely. And just to show you what I mean, there it's seated inside there. Now, I don't want it to go very far at all. It's literally just possibly one or two millimeters in there. I can turn this now and I hold the back of the pipe and I let this slide down the pipe. I don't want that this to go all the way in. Right, so it's in there and I just need to get the back ready. Right, and then I just need to tighten it with the nut and bolt. You, right, this side, everything is done. You can tie these so they don't knock around. Right, so the tank just needs to be connected. So I just need to extend a pipe from there to the T-junction on the side over there. Now, as I said, this thing can just be moved. So I can just pull that to the side. I just need to insert a pipe over there all the way to here. Just make sure the pipe is all the way in and then I can just tighten this. Check that everything else is tight. Right, now I just insert that to the tank. Now I've left my tank pipe a little bit long and that's because I wanna be able to get to the filters. So that means I can just pull this out, get to the filters, change them when necessary, and then I can just put this back. However, I don't want this to be loose like this and you can get clamps that can just hold the pipes out of the way. Right, because this unit came with a pump, I just need to connect this to a power outlet. Now I'm just going to drill a little hole on the side here and then I'm going to wire it to a plug on the counter. I am going to have to change the fitting, so I'm just cutting this two-prong plug off. Right, I've just drilled a little hole in the corner there from the other side of the counter and I can thread the wire through. Right, there's the wire coming from the other side and there is the plug outlet above the counter. And I need to put some trunking from where the wire comes out up to where the plug outlet is. I just measure the trunking and cut off what I need. Using a hacksaw, I'm just cutting the trunking to size. Right, I can either glue this down or use double-sided tape and now I just need to get the alignment and stick it down. Right, I can now plug in my unit and switch it on. Right, now that everything is connected, I just need to make sure that that is in the open position. So I've checked all the joins and they're all tight. Right, I now open the valve, so the hot water is now connected and here is the cold and then the water purification system is now filling up. Right, you can see the water is now filling up. Right, I just held these pipes in place with a cable tie. It is not tight, the pipes can still move. Right, now that everything's connected and plugged in, I open this and in your case you'll probably find there's quite a lot of air that needs to come out of the system. Let the air come out. Once the water starts to flow, I close this. I then wait until the tank is completely full, meaning I'll no longer hear the pump working. Once the pump has stopped working, leave this on and let the system flush. Right, let the system flush until the tank is completely empty. I can actually feel this tank is completely empty and I turn this off and I wait for the tank to fill up again, the pump will stop pumping, and then I do this process one more time. After flushing the system twice, you can then drink the water. While the system is repressurizing, just go around and make sure that everything has been tightened. Right, so everything is connected. Thanks for watching, and cheers.